previously on the challenge. We all know that by spray painting stuff, um, that instantly makes anything carpy really. A few spray paints. <laughs> there's, his, there's his brolly. Probably just going to close my eyes and hope for the best, I think. I think that's the best option here. Maybe I'll just do half of it. That looks so good. Well, I think that looks freaking amazing. Um, I'm sure Harry will agree. We'll just have to wait and find out. Why have you done that? What have you done? <laughs> you just <laughs> ruined my bivvy. If you don't pass, you have to shave your beard off. It's not, it's not happening. Do I wish this was a ghosty and not a beautiful near linear? Uh, yeah. I probably do, to be honest, um, because I would like to keep my beard, but under normal circumstances, phew, I couldn't care less. I've, I have absolutely loved this session. It's been hard work, very rewarding, caught some lovely fish. Uh, I'm absolutely buzzing, to be honest. And speaking of buzzing, I think Harry's going to get buzzing right now with the electric <laughs> razor. And I think he's got a job to do. <laughs> you know what? I am gonna take it easy on you. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna shave anything. Well, now, that... I'm gonna shave it off at the start of the next challenge. <laughs> I'd rather. I'd rather you do it now, actually. <laughs> really. I'm Mark Pitchers, wader wearing, tea drinking, beard trimming, carp freak. I've been an angler for over 30 years and I've caught carp from waters far and wide, big and small. For me, it doesn't matter where, as long as the challenge is exciting and inspiring. But now the tables have turned and it's over to you, the public, to assign my next mission on Fox's Facebook page. It's not exactly the easiest challenge, is it? Rivers and lakes, rigs and baits. He fell to the cat meat. There's been a number of incredibly tough challenges during this series. Have you been drinking the icer again? Some of which I've knocked out the park. Challenge completed. Others have dealt me a devastating blow. But I'm still here. I'm ready to pick up any gauntlet that is thrown down. This cart freak is not giving up without a fight. Oh, this is the challenge. Are we actually doing this? Are you, are you just winding me up? You're actually going ahead with it. I, I really thought you were just joking. I thought I thought you'd I thought there'd be some way I could get out of it or something. You really really gonna do it? Yeah, I think it's because to make up for your own inadequacies because because you haven't hit puberty yet and you can't grow any sort of facial hair. I think you're taking it out on me. That's what I see it as. Right then, I guess we better get started. You look very you're probably the least competent person to be doing this, aren't you really? Uh, You've never even held an electric razor, have you? Uh, no, to be honest. Smile. I'll start about there. That's actually really hurting. You've got quite a bit of facial hair actually. That's actually, I don't know what you're doing, it feels like you're dragging a broken bottle across my face. Ah! <laughs> What are you doing? <laughs> Not as you take it off as much as I Gee, want. You press it on, like you you press it on really hard. You, it's cutting me. <laughs> it's actually cutting me. You've done it again. What are you <laughs> it's doing? It's not cutting you. It is. It, it's not. There's no blood. Chill out. I'm gonna have a massive rash when you're done with this. I tell you now, because it, it's. I can feel it. It's, <laughs> I'm very close. Ow! You've done Lift it again! Your <laughs> Lift your head up. Is that blood? No! Ah! Oh. <laughs> it's just because it's thick. It's not thick, it's because you're Chill pressing out. it into my face. Oh, I have actually cut you. I know you have! <laughs> God, how long is this taking? Jesus! Okay, I'll just stop there then. I think, I think that will do. Well, if that's how you're going to play it, be warned, because I've still got them spray paints. You spray painted half of my bivvy 
So I'm shaving off half of your face. Well, that was predictable, wasn't it? You haven't shaved, you took the skin off half me face, I think is more, more accurate. You are bleeding. I know I'm bleeding. <laughs> it's cut to bits. Right, well, enjoy the challenge. I'm going to have a word with that blog over no, there. I'm not going to give you this back. <laughs> How predictable. Oh, that hurts. That's really sore. What's up, carp freaks, and welcome to challenge number 14. This time, Fox had asked you to write in with your suggestions and make them canal specific. We had absolutely hundreds of suggestions, but the winning one came in from Nathan Jack, and it's called Carp are the new carp. He says, Mark must catch two carp over 15 pound to pass the challenge. However, because Mark is always saying that certain species of fish are the new carp, he must also use match tactics to catch a fish that is not a carp. Harry gets to choose the dedicated match species and Mark can only fish for carp after catching the first carpy non-carp fish. <laughs> the order must go carpy non-carp fish, 15 pound plus carp. Once the first carp is caught, then I must go back to the next nominated match fish in order to unlock the ability to catch the second carp. Mark can't double up on the match fish. However, there is a twist. As Harry is selecting the two match species, for every fish Mark catches that is not one of those species, one pound will be added on to the pass weight of the carp. I think that's a really, really good suggestion, that one. I'm, I'm, I'm quite pumped up for this. I've been doing a little bit of dabbling around for other core species this winter. So I feel like I'm, I'm already pumped up, psyched up in the zone and I really can't wait to get started actually. So here we are on a canal in the Midlands. Um, I've actually fished quite a lot of canals over the years, although they have nearly all been as a match angler. And I can count on one hand the number of canal carp I've actually caught. Um, I've caught three. Uh, two of them were on the pole, and the biggest one was about a pound. And the other was about 17 pounds, and that was actually caught by design uh, from this very stretch behind me just before Christmas. Um, I only fished for a few hours and just a short winter day session. Um, so obviously managing to catch a fish in a few hours, that's why I've come back here, full of confidence that I can repeat that same result again, hopefully. <laughs> um, but it all depends, I think. I think this, this challenge kind of swings on the other species I've got to catch. That's how I see this challenge going. So really, Harry, what species have I got to catch first? Um... Well, I decided this... A barbel. <laughs> no, I'm going to be fair. Oh, right. Fair. Oh, yeah. And okay. I decided this uh, quite a while ago. Now, I know you've said, like, oh, this fish has overtaken that fish, and that fish has overtaken this fish as the most carpy fish. But we all know, in reality, that perch are okay. still probably hold the crown, yeah, yeah. I would say. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm kind of in agreement they're, there. They're very accessible. Anyone can catch them, so you've got to catch a perch. All oh, right. That is your first. Okay. Fish. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's get cracking. I'm up for that. Have you got some gear to catch perch? I have actually. Yes. Surprisingly, I've been doing some perch fishing this winter. I've been practicing. <laughs> <laughs> right. Let's get started. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Proper butchered me. I like it. I've got two sides me, haven't I? Like a like a like a posh sophisticated side. Yeah. Yeah, this side be on oh, I look amazing. <laughs> well 
this is the stretch I decided to, uh, to target. Most of the canal is actually quite narrow, um, apart from this one area here where, it's a, where there's a, a basin. It's the widest area of the canal uh, and the deepest area of the canal. Um, it's actually non-navigable. <laughs> non-navigable. Navigable. Christ. Non-navigable. Non-navigable. <laughs> oh, it's frustrating me. Navigable. 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 It's not being a div, just say the word. It's not hard, just say a word. Navigable. My mouth thinks that's what it should be saying. So I'll, I'll get to this is a non, then you say it and I'll mouth it <laughs> and see if that works. Yeah. You ready? This is actually a non navigable canal. <laughs> <laughs> that work. Yeah, that work. It works, yeah. Try it in my accent though, at least. Okay. At least put some effort into it. Right. This is actually a non navigable canal. <laughs> You didn't move your mouth, no. no. Right. When we're going after this, I've forgotten now. It's non-navigable. Ah. Then you're talking about you need to catch perch. This is actually a non-navigable canal. <laughs> uh, <but laughs> oh, Jesus. Um, there's actually no boat traffic. I'll just say that. There's no boat traffic. <laughs> uh, there's actually no boat traffic on this. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Oh, God. Right. There's actually no boat traffic on this canal, but this, this basin looks like one of the most fishy spots on the whole, whole of the canal. I'm sure it will hold all manner of species, so uh, I think it's a great place to, to start to try and catch a perch and then hopefully a carp. <laughs> He's gentle. Oh, hello. Ah, that's not so gentle. So I've just rigged up with a, uh, a bobber type float. I've got a fine diameter, eight pound main line on. I've just got a bulk of shot about a foot from the hook. Uh, and I've just got a, a fine diameter, six pound hook link and a size eight spade end hook. And I'm gonna be using a, a lobworm, either half a lobworm or a whole lobworm. So uh, yes, let's get cracking. I'm like the last person I should be giving advice on how to catch perch. Oh, I can't use a whole lobby. Lob top Why tail. Not? Oh, sorry, worms. I don't think I can. Oh, I feel mean. I sort of close my eyes, put them on the hook, and cast them out, I suppose. Can't, oh, I can't. I literally. I'm just, I can't do it. What's <laughs> it? I just. I, it's just <laughs> brutal, <laughs> isn't it? You, you actually being serious? I am being 100% serious. I'm not even joking. Oh, I feel sorry for him. I don't feel me putting it on. Can you put it on? <laughs> Sorry, mate. I am sorry. I feel I feel awful. So, don't worry. I'll let you go when I'm done. <laughs> I'm just going to give it ten minutes with just a worm out there, and uh, obviously, if there's any perch in the area, I'm sure they'll be keen to to snap that up. In this alley, there's a guy fishing directly opposite me who's been chucking his spinner, his plug, around the whole of the basin all morning, from like three foot in front of me to over there, to over there, to over there. He's just got in the bushes for a wee, so while he has, I'm just gonna bait, I wanna bait a spot in front of him for later, because that's where, ideally, I'd like to be fishing tonight. It's not sneaky, is it? Uh, well, it is a bit. Well, he's taking the mick, isn't he? <laughs> Happy with that. So what so what what are you doing? I'm <laughs> I am deciding whether to chop up some worms or not. I would like to be fishing with chopworm. 
I just feel so, I just feel so mean. Can you chop them up? No. We need a perch, don't we? And I would like to be fishing. If I was back in my match fishing days right now, then yeah, I'd, I'd be fishing a little bit of chop worm and half a lob worm over the top, something like that. So, uh, I mean that, it's almost like a get out, get out of jail card, isn't it really? A little chop worm and a, and a lobby, lobby tail for a perch, so. I'm trying to, I'm trying to talk myself into doing it. That's what I'm trying to do here. But what, why, why is it such an issue? I just feel mean. I mean, when you chop them up, they don't look happy, do they? They start going mental. They don't, they don't look best pleased. Ah, right, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I just have to close my eyes and do it. Right, let's do it. Yeah. I literally can't even look. I literally can't look when I'm doing it. I can't. I thought you were missing a lot of them. <laughs> oh, Christ, I remember I did that when I was a kid, you know. I used my mum's blender to blend worms. She went absolutely <laughs> mental. <laughs> I bought this ground maker, it said perch <laughs> on it. And I just knew you were going to ask me to catch a perch. Yeah. I thought I've got everything covered what? here. Basically, there's roach in here, bream in here, perch in here. I'm not sure about tench. But I thought, well, unless you ask me to catch something like, a, I don't know, a burbot or something like that. Then <laughs> I'm not. So shallow, isn't it? It looked good, but it isn't good. But it's one thing I know about perch, and I know quite a lot about perch. I know to call them perch and not perch. And that's a love wall. Perch love walls. Find a wall, find perch. What have you done? I've just found this wall. <laughs> hey, yes. <laughs> Okay, well casting around that single lobworm hasn't really worked. So it looks like I'm, I am gonna have to put in a lot more effort than I, than I first thought. I've scaled everything down a little bit now. I've now set up with a, uh, a 2AA uh, insert waggler, slightly finer hook link. It's a, a fine diameter four pound hook link. And I've gone with a, a small dendrobina worm, which I've just sort of nipped the tail off. Um, but the problem now, of course, by finding everything down in this way, it does make it a lot more vulnerable to catching other species. So I, I guess roach, skimmers, things like that, they could all pick up the worm. Um, whereas before fishing that big lobby, I was trying to single out the, the bigger perch, but right now a perch of any size will do. But it is a little bit of a lottery, but I'm prepared to take that risk. I've just put in two balls of ground bait, a few chop worms, a few pinkies. I'm just going to flick this over the top and just fire in a few pinkies and casters over the top and, uh, and see what happens. Oh, that's a perch. It's a little perch. See, if I do get a roach or something, you do know it doesn't count unless it touches my hand, don't you? <laughs> well, unless it's in my hand, it doesn't count. So if I get it to the edge and just shake it off and it falls off, nah, that doesn't count. the leader. No. Oh, well, hang on, this is, the, this is about match fishing, isn't it? That doesn't count. We've got to go match fishing rules. We're to, we're to, we're, this is like... 
So it has to go in, in the net. So obviously we haven't got a keep net, but we have to be in my hand to put it in the keep net. Mm. So unless it's in my... Uh, no. Well, yeah. No. Yeah. If it's out of the water, it counts. No, absolutely yeah. not. That's ridiculous. How is it ridiculous? That is crazy. It's a crazy rule by a crazy person. <laughs> It's not a crazy person that would only shave half a man's face in some sort of pathetic retaliation. <laughs> it's a nice little two ounce perch. That's what we want. Um, I've not had a bite in about three hours fishing. I don't know if it's boredom or frustration. I can't tell, I'm struggling. I think the night in a photo, but I think the actual catching them is just tedious. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I, I, I can't put my finger on it. I always have just in a bad mood. I think the reality is a lot different from the fantasy, isn't it? What, what would be the fantasy? Like a seven pound perch. <laughs> <laughs> what, you've got one? Yeah. It, it was, you said catch a bream, didn't you? That's a result. <laughs> That's a proper result. Yes! Ah, oh, no. Come off. <laughs> Just come off. Just fall off. Fall off. It'll fall off. Fall off. Catching a bream is always like, never my favourite thing, is it? But right now, I mean. <laughs> well, that's just made things a whole lot more difficult, hasn't it? Well, a pound's more difficult. Yeah. Bear in mind, we haven't, caught, we haven't even started yet, Harry. <laughs> oh, no. If you said catch a bream, I'd be ecstatic right now. Yeah. He's quite a nice little bream, isn't he? Nice dark fins. I feel very John Wilson-y here. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so we've we've got a bream, but it, it, it doesn't help. Well, it far from helps. It makes it even harder. It yeah. So I now need to catch a perch and then a carp over 16 pound. Foiled by bream yet again, huh? Oh dear. I've always said they're my favorite <laughs> fish perch, haven't I? No. <laughs> Come on, perch. Come on, it's a one ounce perch. Jesus wept. <laughs> Well, the light is just fading. We've waited all day for a perch. We thought it would be an absolute doddle. The light is more or less gone. It's going to be sort of pitch black in, in about 10 minutes. And we've hooked a perch at last. Who would have thought it would be this difficult to hook a perch? <sighs> My heart's absolutely pounding. <laughs> right, concentrate. It's a good perch as well. Man. Yeah. Oh, God, come on, come on, come on. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Oh, oh, yes! You wouldn't believe how relieved I am right now. I thought we were going to go into tonight having not caught a perch. <laughs> which, and which meant I wouldn't be fishing tonight. There'd be no point in casting out unless we caught this perch. <laughs> Shall we look at it? It's caught a nice perch. Yeah. That's a good perch. Look at him. Oh, that's a big one. <laughs> look at the size of that. Look at him. Nice see, I was only fishing for proper ones, you see. <laughs> that's why it took me so long. Look at that. That's awesome. How wide do you use across his back? Like a Simo perch. So we are one pound 13 ounces. I was trying to select them bigger perch. I thought, I thought, you know, a small one just wouldn't really be very befitting for this challenge. And we all know how impressive a, a, a striped sergeant is. And um, yeah, I've, I've gone and done it really. I, I've, I've set out to catch the bigger one and I've done it. 
Um, so we are up and running now. At last, it's taken way longer than I thought it was going to, but I can now at least get the cart rods out and fish for a 16 pounder. Let's do it. <laughs> Okay, well the plan now is, I mean, it's it's going to be pitch black within the next 10 minutes. Um, I've got nothing set up at all, we've wasted that much time fishing for perch today unsuccessfully until, until right at the death. Um, so I've got nothing set up. What I'm going to do, I've got, um, I've just unpacked my rods, I'm just going to have a, a cast to a spot that I, I pre-baited earlier. I'm going to clip up on that on that mark. So that's one rod. All I need to do then is just get a bait on it, get myself a bit more organised, a bit more set up, cast straight back out over to that baited spot. So that's what I'm going to do now. Well, I was chatting to the, the guy who owns the, the fishing rights on this bit of the canal and he's, uh, he's setting up a, a cafe right on the banks of the, of the basin here. And he very kindly uh, gives us the keys to the, to the toilet here, which also has a light on actually, which has turned out to be very handy because I'm just setting up my rigs in here because at the moment I have no idea where my head torch is. So it turned out to be a bit of a godsend really. Okay, well this is the first rod all rigged up and ready to go. So I'll just go through the setup in a bit more detail. I've got a ready tied submerged leader. That's a lead free leader uh, that sinks like a brick. And because it's lead free, it's very, it's very supple. Um, so if it should lie over a, a, a branch or any sort of debris on the lake bed, canal bed in this instance, then it would actually naturally follow those contours. You can see there as it lies over my hand, kind of follows the contours there. Whereas a, a lead core leader in the same situation could potentially stick up and look a bit, a bit obvious. Uh, and also, that will protect the last few yards against any unseen sharp objects down there. We all know what canals are like. Um, I was fishing somewhere on a canal a couple of weeks ago and I caught a bike wheel and uh, well, I caught a glove as well actually, but it wasn't very sharp, the glove. <laughs> and 10 carrier bags, which also weren't <laughs> sharp, but it could have been sharp objects. Where are we going with this? <laughs> well, a bike wheel. <laughs> bike wheel. That was sharp, it was, was rusty. rusty. Bike wheel sharp. The glove. And it did have a button on it, but that wasn't sharp. Yeah. So it just helps to reinforce and protect those last few feet against any potential breakages. And coming down from that, it's, it's basically my version of the, the hinge stiff rig. Um, the boom section is 25 pound Camotex semi stiff. And the stiff section is doubled over 25 pound rigidity, which creates a very, very stiff section and almost acts like an extension to the hook, which I think makes it very, very hard for the carp to deal with. It makes it hard for them to eject. Um, in effect, it does look quite similar to the Ronnie rig, except it's better because it isn't a Ronnie rig. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, the hook is a size six uh, New Edges stiff rig, beaked point, and the hook bay is the ever faithful Northern, Northern Special. So there it is in all its glory and majesty. Let's, uh, let's get it in there and uh, let's actually catch a car. Tonight we are having chicken with Jamie Oliver's curried chickpeas. It's like eight o'clock at night and we haven't had a brew yet.
I don't pass this challenge, it's purely down to the lack of beard. I don't I don't feel complete without it. I don't feel I don't feel like I've fished as well as I could do today without my without without see this side of my whole body just isn't functioning properly. Would you like an olive? Not like them. It's something I would like to like, if you know what I mean. I want to see James Bond having one with his Bocca Martini. And I think, yeah, it's quite, it's quite cool and sophisticated. So I would like to like them, but I think they're disgusting. I can't, no, I, honestly, pretend, I can't. Just, just pretend you're Daniel Craig. Go on, then. I haven't tried one for years. <laughs> That's awful. What do you mean? I don't get it. No? Oh, gee, that is, that is... Finish it. Fin just eat the whole thing. <laughs> oh, I can't. No? Go on, go on, eat it. Oh, it's a juicy bit when it's it squirt. Go on, finish it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't. This is actually ridiculous. Oh. <laughs> I just threw it out, it ruined it right. Finish it. I can't. Swallow it. Oh, it's horrible. Oh, <laughs> that's awful. It tastes like um, antiseptic or something. I don't get them. No? No. Hmm. I wonder if this one's been hanging on a while. I didn't really want to see any more of these. Twice I've been cursed by a breed today, isn't it? I won't add on another pound, though. Thank you, it's very kind. I've suffered enough today, I think. Have you, see, <laughs> have you seen enough of him? Well, I've just put that bream back. That's the only bit of activity I've had since I cast out this evening. Um, I don't really know how this is gonna unfold tonight, if I'm honest. I, I really have no idea. Um, we've not seen any, any signs of carp, but this is the sort of, it's the widest and deepest part of the, of the canal. and. It's certainly not warm, and I, I do believe that any carp along this particular stretch are likely to be, or the majority of them, are likely to be where I am now. So, I'd like to think it's going to happen, but I don't know, we're just, we're just going to have to wait and see. Hopefully I'll get woke up at some point in the night and you'll, you'll see me all happy and slimy with a £16 carp. Just after two o'clock in the morning, it's been chucking it down through the night, but I'm not bothered because we're playing a calf. It's really cold as well. <laughs> Just have a first look at him. He's he's, he's not a 16-pounder, but I'll, uh, quite frankly, I'll just be glad to get up and, and off the mark really. Come on, mate. I'm frozen here. This time, come on. Yes. Let's have a look at him. He's definitely not 16 pounds, but we've got our first canal car of the session. And he's got a jacket. 
I'll have a, I'll have a closer look at him. I can't stop shivering. Oh, it's freezing. You can see he's absolutely nailed there. That's a lot of fish tend to be with this version of the rig with that doubled over stiff section. Oh, just as I'm picking up here, I've just noticed his, his tail and it looks like he's had a, a run in with an otter fairly recently. It's it, it's such a shame really. There's been quite a few otters seen around here in recent weeks and as a fishery owner myself, I, I've had them on, on my lake before we were lucky enough to be, to be able to fence it, which obviously you can't do on a canal. And, and that sort of damage is, is, is something that I was seeing on a on, on a daily on a daily basis. So it's it's sad to see. Hopefully your days aren't numbered, mate. I really hope so. But here we are, though. It's our first canal carp of the challenge. He's certainly not 16 pound. I don't need to weigh him to know that. But he's uh, he's certainly into double figures. I reckon around around 12 pound this one. So it feels nice just to get off the mark. It's nice to know that there are carp in this area, which I kind of had a feeling there would be, but it's nice just to confirm that. Um, hopefully there's bigger fish out there too. Let's slip him back and, and try for one a bit bigger, eh? There you go, mate. Stay safe. Well, last night didn't really go to plan, if I'm honest. We had that bream around 10 o'clock, then we did eventually get off the mark with that, that 12 pounder uh, around 2 a.m. And I was quite confident of getting a, a first light bite after that. That came and it turned out to be a tench which dropped off just as I was about to net it. So that was disturbance. I didn't really want around a prime feeding time. It's now, it's just after nine o'clock and nothing's really nothing's really happened um i couldn't really settle to be honest I, I couldn't help but think the rod that i'd cast out at night maybe it had landed in some some twigs or branches or debris on, on the on the bottom and it maybe just wasn't sat right so I, i'm just going to reposition it now as it happens everything was absolutely fine but i just couldn't settle so yeah i'm just going to reposition it now it's a bit of a tricky cast there is some low branches coming out so I, i'm having to to get it where I want it to, I, I'm, I'm having to drill it quite low, quite hard um, to get it underneath them branches and then it hits the clip and, and goes down. So it's, it's a bit of a tricky cast, but uh, I've already been up the tree once. Hopefully this one will uh, actually go in the water. Well, I finally got that rod in position. It took me a few attempts, but I got it just where I wanted it, underneath them tree branches. And when I felt the lead down, it landed with a proper crack. So it's nice and clean and firm there. Now I'm gonna drop a back lead on now. Ordinarily on a canal, you'd use back leads because of the boat traffic, which would wipe out your lines. But the reason I'm using them here is because of Mr. Swan, who's really friendly and uh, he would otherwise just wipe out the rods. You've, you've been coming right up into the, up, up to the, the wall here and uh, pecking about and just being a bit of a general nuisance really. So I've dropped the back leads on, straight off the rod tips, which I'm gonna do now. Oh, right on cue, he's Mr. Swan. So I'm gonna drop them straight off the, off the wall. 
not food. And also what I've done, you'll see, I've got my net next to me, it's poking out just past the tips. And that's kind of, to some extent, discouraging from, from just going along the wall here and, and completely taking the rods out. And it's worked so far, actually. This is proven to be really frustrating, I'm, I'm not going to lie. The last bite I had was off a tench which fell off as I was about to put the net under it. Just lost the fish there, which it wasn't a carp. I'm pretty sure that was, a, was another small tench. I, I am surprised we haven't had more, more action from the carp. There is, there is a couple of other areas we can look at today, but there's people fishing them at the moment. So really, I am kind of faced with a bit of a, a dilemma, and that is, do we stay or do we move to a completely different canal and, and try there? The problem is, is the size of carp I've got to catch. 15 pound plus, well, 16 pound plus, the next fish. By canal standards, that is a, it's a, it's a, a bigger than average stamp from a canal. I know plenty of canals where we can go and definitely catch fish, that won't be a problem but there would be single figure fish, maybe low doubles, chance of getting a 16 pound plus. It would be a tall ass, especially when we've got just over 24 hours of the challenge remaining. The advertise in this canal is, is a decent stamp of fish, which is why I've selected here. I think we would be doing the right thing by staying here when there's such a good chance of a 15 pound plus fish. So I'm gonna stay here. Like I said, there's people fishing on areas I would like to be in right now, but they're, they're leaving in, in a few hours. So um, we can have a look. And another option, of course, is by fishing this same area, but from the opposite bank, I'll be able to get the, the rigs right underneath them tree branches. It, I can actually fish it more effectively from the opposite bank, but you're not allowed to night fish there. That's just, it's the reason I've bivvied up on this side. Um, so yeah, that's another option. Slightly different line angle. We found this on the, on the last challenge actually, where I was fishing up against an island unsuccessfully. Literally fished the same spot from a different angle and we caught a few fish doing it just by having that different line angle running. So that's another option. Um, I'm just going to tie up a couple more rigs, get a few bits together and I think we'll, we'll have a bit, of a, a bit of a move, a bit of a wander and uh, see if we can't winkle one out from over on the opposite bank. <laughs> So I think you've probably got a little bit of explaining to do. T situation. Yeah. Well, okay, how do I put this? No, but there's a reason it's, it's Tetley. It is Tetley decaf because all the excessive brew drinking that I've been doing has had a bit of an effect on me to the point where it's made me intolerant to caffeine. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the thing is there isn't even that much caffeine in a cup of tea but when you have like 50 cups a day then it starts to like affect you the thing is this isn't this isn't actually like made up no it's really not made up <laughs> it's not made up in the slightest if i just had one cup of tea my fl my face would probably flare up like a beetroot if i had more than one cup of tea i would probably think i was having a heart attack and in a severe case, which is like what happened to me, uh, I would find myself, I would find myself collapsing and ended up in hospital for 36 hours. So it, so all that, all them brews over the years, just to be carpy, just to be big and clever, <laughs> it backfired massively, hasn't it really? In a way, it's sort of good because it's like discovering tea all over again. I can try all the decaf teas. Yeah. And what is generally, I would say, no disrespect to Tetley, but it's not a good tea. A, a, a normal one, is it? It's not, it's not, I don't think it's the best. It's not great, but it's pretty crap, isn't it? Yeah. Weak and, I, yeah. But the decaf is actually the best. So, better than Yorkshire tea, decaf. So, I think it's like, it's like, it's like I don't know, learning all over again. My palate's gone now. I used to about to smell the tea from like 50 yard and just know what it was. It's about that. I identify tea by the sound of the the, the, the bag rustling. 
I tell you what, I'll tell you the, the main change I've seen is the grunt. I forgot, I've forgotten how to grunt. <laughs> Me. <laughs> it's as good as it gets. It's as good as it gets. Downhill spiral now, isn't it? That's how I see it right now. Half a beard, crap bros. It's, it's, it's almost like a demotion from carpiness. Me. <laughs> <laughs> the bush I've had my eye on for the for the past 24 hours but we haven't been able to get anywhere near um, so yeah so now I can make a cast this is a little bit shallower here you can see it's a quite a it's quite a good bush I want to try and get it to as, as close to the bush as I can I can find if you can just brush against the bush as you go in then that's how you that's how you want it No, that's nowhere near the, the bush. I'm kind of struggling for ideas at the moment. If you look to the to left of me, you can see for about a mile up the canal and this is literally the only overhang for as far as the eye can see in that direction. There is no other overhanging branches, any sort of cover like this for a, a mile in that direction. It narrows right up. Um, it's very shallow up there. It's about 18 inches deep. Um, so I really would have thought any carp along this stretch would be here down over. I think any bites we are going to get are going to come at night, which puts a bit more pressure on me because we, although we have got 24 hours of the challenge, just over 24, the 24 hours of the challenge remaining, I almost feel like the window of opportunity to have this challenge wrapped up will be dusk until early morning. I think that's the reality of the situation. I think if I even my beard off, just let me shave the other side. I bet you'll see a remarkable difference. I just, I, I think that's what it is. It, it's, it's affecting my mojo. I can't think straight. I've cast up the tree twice, which isn't really like me. I mean, they weren't even like just in the tree, like the top of the tree. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you should at least let me sort my face out. You've had your fun. The gag's over now, it's, yeah, bo it's boring. It's, yeah. You know, it's been 24 hours. That old woman, she, she didn't even look and think, what the hell? <laughs> the, the jokes wore off. Well, I'm having a ever so slight change of plan. I've come back to the, the basin where I fished last night. Um, I've still got two rods over on the corner there before it sort of goes into the, into the narrow channel. Still got my two rods there, but I'm gonna put one rod out in open water. You can use three rods here. So 
I'm going to use three rods. I don't know why I haven't used three rods sooner, really. But um, we just had a few few casts around uh, with a, with a lightish lead, trying to find some deeper, firmer areas out here. And it, it's it is fairly shallow, silty, soft, choddy uh, uh, bottom. Most most of the basin. But I've had um, I've just found a a very small, firmer area over towards the far bank, probably um, three quarters of the way across towards the, uh, towards that dog crap bin actually. Nice marker, nice visual marker during the daytime. So um, yeah, I've had a few casts there. Um, it is only small. I land on it and it goes on a nice crack, casts a, a few feet, well, a foot to the right, and it lands in old chod again. So it is a very small, very small firm area. I'm hoping it's nice and firm as a result of, of fish feeding there. So I'm just gonna have a cast out now. I've already clipped up to this, this mark. Nice visual marker in the daytime there, a red, a red bin. Whilst you're making that brew, can you just talk about how today's gone and what you think is going to happen? Well, well, what do you want me to say? Hello, carp freaks. Well, today's been an absolute bag of sh**. <laughs> 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 <Just doing that. laughs> Usually, at the start of every challenge, I say, I think this is the toughest one yet. But I really didn't think that that would be the case with this one. I thought it was fairly straightforward. I did think, I did, I wouldn't say easy, but I thought it was very achievable and it's really kicked me in the nuts, quite frankly. Um, in fact, I would go as far as saying I've never felt so far away from passing a challenge before. Um, and the way I see it now, if if I haven't caught from here by, well, by first light, then, then I don't think we'll catch them here. So, I'm just gonna have this brew. I've started packing away most of the non-essential bits of kit. I've started loading them into the van. So, yeah, if I haven't caught by, by dawn, I think we're going to have to move to a different canal. I, I, I was sure this venue was the place to do this challenge. I really was. It's a good average size. Um, and getting two or three fish, I thought was very achievable. But for whatever reason, it just isn't happening. So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have this brew, finish having a pack away. Then I'm going to get my head down, ready for an early start. And, a, and potentially an early start on a new canal. We're just gonna have to wait and see what the night brings. Well, it looks like the uh, decision to bait that open water spot has paid off. I, um, I just had what I thought was a, a bit of a liner. I just decided to get out and investigate and the bobbin dropped down really suddenly. And um, that line that turned out to be a, like another carp.
You know what, I'm not even bothered that it's not 16 pound. <laughs> it's been so frustrating just to get another calf in the net. I'm pretty happy with that. The, the, the challenge was to catch two calf for 15 pound plus. I've caught two calf. They haven't been 15 pound plus, but I've caught the amount of fish that would have been required to, to pass. And you can't pick what size fish picks up your hook bait unless you unless you're stalking them trying to single them out they do say size is luck and to to some degree i, I agree with them i think definitely agree with them <laughs> so <laughs> i think we should have the toilet in the background <laughs> and there's nothing more carpet than a toilet so i'll just be there there is something more carpy than a toilet. A police traffic cone. That's got to be in the photo, isn't it? Okay. That would be an epic, epic backdrop. I wasn't joking. Unless you don't think, I, I mean, I, I think it's obscenely carpy. So what's it called? The white tip's well common. Yeah. Swirly patch there. So he's not 16 pound and I couldn't care less. He's uh, a bit bigger than the and the fish we caught the previous night is around, I'd say it's 13 plus this one. Lovely common, he's got little white, white tips to all his fins. Beautiful fish. I'm over the moon with this one, it has been frustrating, so just to get a bite, regardless of the size, it feels absolutely great. And it's nice to catch it off that open water spot as well, so a slight change of tactics, producing a bite's work, so it's always a nice feeling. And yeah, right now I'm actually really quite happy. Tony, Tony the Tench, his name's Tony and he's a Tench. Tony, Tony the Tench, his name's Tony the Tench. Half a word. Half a word. Oh. I was one about a swan yesterday as well. I, I can't. I don't know, what, the, what was the swan? Mr. Swan, that's my name. My name again is Mr. Swan. <laughs> well, good morning. I don't know what number tents this is, but I've had a few, a few of these through the night. They've kept me awake pretty much ever since I slipped that cart back, really. I've had a few of these, lost a few of these. I've had quite a few twitchy little takes, which I've lifted into nothing, which are obviously were these little fellas. Um, so yeah, I've had very little sleep. Um, but at the moment, I am still quietly confident of a, of a cart bite. Um, the only thing is, it's a very clear sky today. There's not a cloud in the sky. The sun's coming up. Once it gets to about nine o'clock, it's gonna be bright, still, and it's gonna be the same tough conditions that we were faced with yesterday. And I really do need to be fishing under some sort of cover. The only thing is, the only cover along this stretch of canal, I did try yesterday. It was very shallow, and I really wasn't feeling it, to be honest. So. I don't know, I, I'm left with a bit of a dilemma. We'll have to see what the next hour brings. And then I'm gonna need a, I don't know, I'm gonna need to get me, me thinking cap on really.
Well, I think if we stayed here, we'd be flogging a dead horse. I really do. It's so bright, the fish are going to want to be under some sort of cover, which this isn't here. And I think in these situations, they're just more likely just to switch off feeding. So we need to go somewhere else. There's two potential venues we could look at. Um, one is, is a place I fished a, a couple of weeks ago. It's about an hour from here, but at a 24 hour session and blanked. And the other place is much farther. It's about two hours drive from here. It's a stretch I've never fished before, never seen before, but I'm told by quite a few people it's a productive spot. So that's where we're gonna go. Um, right, let's get cracking and I will see you there. Harry. So we're now two hours south of our original position, we are now at the Grand Union Canal, which is the longest and probably most famous canal in the country, I would say. Now, I don't know anything at all about this stretch. I've never fished the Grand Union itself at all before. Um, but this, this particular stretch came highly recommended by, by quite a lot of people. But the first thing we noticed when we got here is that strictly no fishing sign. So these people are obviously way more carpy gangster than I am. But where it says strictly no fishing, just underneath that sign is a sign that's fallen on the floor that says they think it's available. I mean, that sign could have come from anywhere really, but it's there. Um, and then just a little bit further down, it says fishing, but no mooring. And then just past it, it says no fishing. So we're going to read between the lines here and just assume that fishing is allowed. Um, but, <laughs> but we're really up against it. We have got, um, we have got just over two hours of this challenge remaining. It's going to take a monumental miracle for me to pass this. So let's get cracking and just see what happens. It's like a lucky dip, isn't it, on a canal? That's a dog, dog thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's heavy, it's got some weight to it. There you go, present. Well, that's it, our time is now up, but I feel like I've come really close with this challenge. Uh, well, sort of, in a way, kind of, ish. Well, not at all, actually, when I, when I think about it. It's, um, the challenge was to catch two canal carp, which I did, but the actual challenge was to catch two 15 pound plus canal carp, which I came slightly short with a, with a 12 and a 13 pounder. Um, and then obviously we, we've moved, we've come to the Grand Union Canal, and we have seen quite a few fish in the short time that we've been here, but most of them, well all of them, have been deep within the no fishing zone. And also, the average size we've seen has been between, I'd say, five and maybe 10 pound. I'd say the biggest fish we've seen was probably a scraper double. So it makes me rest easy knowing that the original canal choice of mine probably was the best one to pass this challenge. And perhaps I just got unlucky with the size of fish that I caught. But at the end of the day, I have really enjoyed this session. I've caught perch, tench, bream, carp, and a dog bone. What more could you want during the session? Um, so really, I guess all that is left for me to say is thank you very much for your suggestion, Nathan Jack, but you win this one, challenge failed. <laughs>